Hi, and welcome to Community Hotline at Home. I'm your host, Monica Weitzel. Today, we'll be talking with a nonprofit organization located right here in Gresham, Oregon, Troublesome Movement. Their focus is on assisting minorities and other underprivileged or underrepresented populations through scholarships and mentoring. By providing education and economic opportunities, the people at Troublesome strive to inspire others to raise the bar. Their goal is to be nothing less than the leader in transforming communities. With us today, we have Dr. Stephen Graves, who is the founder and CEO of Troublesome Movement. Dr. Graves, why don't you start out by telling me a little bit about that name? Because <laughs> that is a very interesting name for a nonprofit organization. You know, I thought so too. Um, You know, I was really inspired by, I guess, this change and uh, the best way of kind of making a change. And I kept thinking to myself, and as a child, I grew up in the 90s and everything else it is, uh, there was an artist who you probably can see on my back wall here, Tupac Shakur, who had a song called Troublesome. uh, And it really just spoke to this idea, of course, about what it's going to take to really make change. And this idea of revolutionary ideas and revolutionary actions. um, And when I kept, you know, figuring out, well, what's really going to tell other people about um, the kind of impact or the kind of uh, vibe that they should feel when they see or they hear, but also this, it should be something problematic, uh, you know, mm. very, very problematic to the kind of status quo and the, the current standards. And I really, really wanted something to kind of emphasize that we are uh, ones who see the current conditions of society, see the current status quo and the current standing of our morals, values, and character. And that is something that we are uncomfortable with and that we are dedicated to changing. And for those who were really, you know, promoted into and deeply saturated in the current standards of society, they were going to find us problematic. And you, they would find uh, the way that we go about uh, our ideas and expressing our ideas and transforming communities to be very troublesome. Tell me a little bit about the troublesome movement itself. What was the impetus for starting it? Uh, Troublesome started in 2012. The emphasis really started from just uh, my dealings as an educator in, in college classrooms and just the, the conversations and the continued rhetoric that was taking places in classrooms. And I think that there was just a vibe and a beat amongst students and younger people about just the directions and the ideas that were being perpetuated. Um, and I always wanted to do something in addition to being in education. And I always found that there's probably a, a better way to really make change in our communities Uh, Sometimes we get trapped into thinking that politics and voting and that our professions can be, you know, the main vehicles of change. But I just wanted a real more ground roots way, a more uh, simplistic way that would allow me to really just make the kind of change that I wanted to from the inside of how I felt and what I believed in, uh, more so from the outside. And so um, just with that and the combination of of the vibe and the ideas coming from students, I really had an idea to put a, a, together an organization and a, and a nonprofit that was going to be just different than the rest, that was going to be focused on missions and values that were going to be different, that really focused on self-empowerment and excellence. Um, and so I, I think that the, in 2012, I just had just a, a great opportunity and I really had some time uh, to really just focus in, and, and think about it a whole lot. And so uh, the start just really is kind of aligned and I was with some great people and some great students uh, you know, Sam Krause, Steve Hopped, uh, Janelle Nung, um, and some others. So I just was just blessed and, and highly favored with an opportunity to do so. And I really just felt like through working with college students, through working in communities and actually being on the ground, listening to communities, and then just trying to do the th- kind of things that they were speaking to us and the things that they wanted to have changed, but doing so in a way that we could, you know, feel, feel good about ourselves about and not uh, you know, been in our integrity at all was was that the main impetus of of starting this organization? You had the students really involved in it then, right from the very beginning. Absolutely, I was um, an, uh, teaching at Mount Hood Community College at the time, and I was also the um, faculty advisor for the Black Student Union, um, and I was teaching political science there. And uh, as an educator now, and as an educator then, my uh, teaching style and method is a little. Some would say unorthodox, but I like to call it fantastic and Socratic. Um, this is the way the dialogue and conversation kept going. And so I really started this vibe at a college classroom, like as a, being a TA at the University of Nevada and just having this time in classrooms where I got separate time to really work on my own ideas and work on my own theories. Wow. I bet you're, I bet you're a really popular teacher, actually. I can imagine that the students really like you. But have you found that you've learned from them as well? I, I'm imagining that that's a, kind of a two-way street in this Oh, yes. I mean, they definitely keep me young. I can say that. I mean, I have, I have gotten older. I have gotten less and less hip over the time. <laughs> Being in the classroom has definitely allowed me to stay somewhat in tune with 
the culture and with common slang and, and not feel as old as I do sometimes and everything else it is. Um, but I definitely think that the idea of being in the classroom and having that, that relationship with students and being able to pick their brains and have their ideas um, and, and, and that's really the, the, the target and aim of the mission of the, of the organization and who we're really trying to really impact, really. I mean, there's only, you know, so many years left in this old body of mine. And so I'm really trying to set up the next generation and those who come after real, as the main focus of uh, and the purpose behind the organization. So you talked about um, about the, the students. Are they uh, is college students the focus? Is it is that primarily who you work with as, as college students? Those are primarily who our volunteers are and who our interns are, but our main focus and really aim is, is all ages. But educational wise, we start with K through 12. And, and the K through 12 system as the way it's currently structured and the way it's currently funded and the way it's currently organized um, is just one for which we just do not feel very confident in. And one that we feel like could be <clears throat> really at the impetus of the vast improvement that we see in society and the problems that we face in society really start at K through 12. So the majority of our educational programs, uh, you know, focused at that demographic at K through 12. But yet we also recognize the need of parenting education and stuff as well. And so one of the main things that we try to do also is educate parents about how to talk about issues as income inequality, uh, you know, racism, black and African history prior to colonialism. Um, so we really try to focus on just overall education and transforming communities of all age and size. Anyone who's disadvantaged or anyone who's perpetuated in a system for which uh, they're not being you know, listened to or they're not receiving any privilege from is one for which we're, we're really trying to aim and target those people. This is an interesting time, I imagine, for you as well as it is for everybody else in that uh, COVID has kind of turned everything upside down. And we now, um, the whole education system is changed it's going to be mostly all online um, and i imagine that's affected what you have to do or what you are trying to do and then also the all the social unrest and, and the issues around black lives matter and and the you know the publicity that that is getting which is is a wonderful thing but it's also a very challenging thing um, how have those two two issues kind of uh, affected your your work as um, you know as a nonprofit leader well, as far as Black Lives Matter goes, Black Lives has always been something that we've been really uh, focused on and something that we really take to heart, obviously, as an African-American Black male myself. Obviously, a lot of the things that for which and that they advocate for and, that, and the ideas that they have, uh, I clearly fall in line and to share with. Uh, but the unrest of, uh, and the politics and the protests that are going on, um, clearly they've brought in and have highlighted the issues that Black people face. Um, but it's important as we try to continue on is that these things aren't anything new. Um, we've seen protests like this before, um, previously 68, 92, 96, in various places. And so the idea, of course, in the, that what we really try to hark on when we're looking at these protests, when we participate in these protests in Gresham, in Portland, in Columbia, Missouri, is that we're looking for tangible things here. And sometimes we do not want to get the ideas of actual change, substantive, tangible change. Those are the things for which we're asking and the thing that people are asking for. I think that we have that what this moment in time is really pr proving is that the rhetoric of the past, and this is where our organization really tried to hark in on the innovative of, of ideas, is that what these times are calling for is the change of ideas and a change of direction. One that's going to focus on substantive, tangible change that black people and other minorities are actually want to see. The rhetoric, the, the symbolic token gestures that we've received over many of years now, we realize that that is not going to be the change that's going to help us. Those things are not improving black communities. Name changes, names of roads and monuments and flags and all that stuff, that is culturally nice, absolutely. But that is, does not change the impact and the economic downfall and the things that are plaguing black communities. They're, we need tangible things. And so when we go about these protests and the rhetoric changes and the dialogue changes from group to group and as other groups get involved in these movements and get involved in these protests and we get further and further away from the actual interests of black people and the needs that black people actually have, then this calls on for organizations for other people who are really focused on the issues that black people face to really step up and be a voice and to really try to uh, you know, re-steer this boat in the right direction because it's very easy and it's been so simplistic for the rhetoric and the really ideas of change that black people are really asking for to get lost. And what we really want to focus on is the tangible things, the resources that black people can actually feel and experience and have in their own communities and not so much the symbolism and the token gestures that come with 
uh, things like name change and everything else it is. The right. thing that COVID has really focused on and done is just express that economic inequality that's rampant in this country when we talk about what's essential and what's, and what's not essential. It also then points to the point of education and teachers and the way that people feel about teachers and the education system. A lot of parents who have now been homeschooling the, and their children and everything else it is should hopefully have a new respect for the job that teachers do and the resources that they require and the things that they need to educate our children in a proper way. And also with going with the culture, the kind of things that are being taught and the way they're being taught and who's in the classroom actually teaching those things. All of those things need to come into evaluation. And this time and the way that we're talking about trying to get reintroduced back into the classroom and who's going to go in the class and who's going to be online, who has access to being online, in addition to the parents trying to get back to work and be able to afford things for their families. All those things just really kind of point to the need and the, and the impact of change uh, that which we're advocating for, and they all just kind of uh, point in the same direction for which we're trying to go. You know, it, it, it does to me feel like a really transformative time, and I, I hope that it is, and that, and that we'll all be going in the right direction. But it is definitely giving people a chance to really step back and think about what's been going on in both those areas. And, and you're right, we don't, you don't need icing on the cake of, you know, name changes on the streets and stuff. I, I get that. Um, and, and speaking of transformative, you... You, um, I saw on the website that you also work on um, transforming communities through political and social activism. As we're seeing again with these protests in the current culture, there's a lot of emphasis on government and a lot of emphasis on certain people and parties on, on both sides. Who, and this is why we really try to focus on a special brand of what we would call politics. Um, is that it's easy to put all our eggs in one basket, in a, in a political basket or a political party and everything else is, and think that that's going to be the ways of going about change. But what we don't realize is that the most shortest and most impactful way to really make change is at home in your communities, this thing that you do and see and visit on a very day-to-day -day basis, your local communities, your local school boards, things like that. Those things that take place on a daily basis, those are the real kind of things that really change people's lives and change people's communities that else it is. It's not every November, every two, four and six years at the polling booth. So empowering communities to have access and the ability to do those things, whether it be through freeing up of, of economic times of hours to work or creating the kind of programming that would allow parents to have be in more involved um, in their children's education when it comes to uh, certain things, including race and the economics uh, and the way the world works in some mysterious ways. Um, so those are the really kind of things that we try to focus on and what are things our program for. Self-empowerment for young black males and for teenagers as far as mentorship goes, giving them the tools for which they can use to be uh, empowered individuals and be able to survive on them by themselves or in an environment for which they become less and less dependent on others in order to kind of create their means of subsistence. Uh, those are very important things for which we be, that we really try to work on, whether it be through self-defense classes, whether it be through um, community gardens, whether it be through um, uh, personal life skills classes and, and things like that. Things that just empower individuals in order to improve themselves and be the best version of themselves so that they hopefully go into the community and then and have those same kind of characteristics and those same values that they can then transfer to other people once they are able to identify and see the changes and stuff that are being made. Those are the things that we think they'll make the most quickest and most substantive change when we talk about ideas and innovative and revolutionary ideas, change that, that go against the kind of status quo and the constant perception of media that we talk about in society. You mentioned um, young black males. Do you work strictly with the male population? Absolutely not. We Absolutely not. We have a lot of college-age uh, black females and Hispanic females and Asian females who also get involved in mentoring and groups. We're looking, for, again, we're, as, as we work with black communities and we feel them to be our target audience, absolutely. Mm -hmm. we're, here to, we're here to open the minds and, and transform communities of, of all backgrounds, everything else it is. People in need are in people in need and the time for which that we're currently facing, this is a time for which change can clearly be done, but it takes a certain amount of mobilization and most, and most importantly, unity in order to achieve these things. As an individual or as part of uh, the, the East County community, what kinds of things can people do to, to help you out, to move this, move this whole movement forward? We're always thinking of the ideas. If you post, look at our Facebook page and our website, we're always looking for ideas and, and communities and areas that need help. 
or ideas from the community about things that they would like to see done, absolutely. Uh, we're always seeking volunteers and donations at our website at www.troublesomemovement.com, which is clearly most things, of course, in this system, in this world, cost things. Uh, we are no different from anybody else. Um, but when we're talking about East, East County, the things that most people can probably do in order to really help us and assist us is to be open-minded um, and, and also not be afraid of confrontation um, I understand that the changing demographics of Gresham and the East County are going through some changes and people have been real uncomfortable with the changing demographics in certain school districts and in certain areas. We understand it and we get it. Uh, but in order to kind of make the community that which everybody can participate in, it's going to take open minded and open hearts and open minds on both ends and on both sides. And then and in a lot of time that is primarily what we're asking for when we have events and when people are trying to have, you know, um, realistic an important dialogue that people come to the table with open minds um, and not closed off uh, so which we can act really have really honest open-hearted open-minded discussions about the changes that we made because clearly there are changes that need to be made in East County and in, in our area and we just want people to contribute um, and to be open-minded and, and most like and most importantly of course and our missions and our efforts to make a donation. Now um, before I let you go here um, I think I read that you were looking for somebody to hire for your organization or, or more volunteers, something like that. Um, yeah. Can you tell me who, who, what kind of people you're looking for to help out your organization? Oh, I love a good intellectual, intellectually minded, courageous, um, motivated people with strong wills and who have a very good grind community, uh, you know, focus and ethic. Absolutely. Uh, don't necessarily have to be college students or else it is, but just passionate intellectual individuals uh, who are interested in as far as canvassing and networking goes, uh, willing to volunteer for some of our social programs and community gardens and then mentorship. Uh, people who have you know, knowledge in, in social media and all those fancy things for which I'm purely uh, not <laughs> Those kind of things, we would love to hear from you. We'd love to have your help. Uh, you can contact us at any time. We would love to hear from you and to work with you. Wonderful. Well, you know, I, I'm a big fan of mentoring, so I'm really glad to hear you doing that. I think that uh, that really helps create leaders. Uh, just being able to mentor somebody else, it, hel it helps develop leaders. And you're certainly developing leaders. So I appreciate the work that you're doing in East County. And it sounds like the kind of thing that will have a ripple effect in effect, you know, we can get this community going with it. It'll, you know, it just kind of spreads out from there. So I appreciate you being my guest today. Is there anything else that you'd like to share about uh, Troublesome Movement before I let you go? Again, just to follow us again on Instagram, Facebook, check out our website. We appreciate the donations. Uh, and, more, and more importantly, again, the idea and concept of self-empowerment in order to have the best individuals that we can be. Uh, we've got to just raise our standards, raise our commitment uh, and our commitment to excellence. And, and we're here and we're listening and we're grateful and we're always thankful and appreciative for being here. Um, and thank you for everybody who's already been a part and have done everything they've done to help us get off the ground. Uh, and we continue to uh, be blessed and looking forward to what happens next. Sounds good. Thank you so much. And uh, from all of us at Metro East, uh, remember, we're all in this life together. So we are a community. Um, let's raise each other up. Thanks. See you next time. Mm -hmm.